I feel uh, I did the deep sigh. Look at that, look at me. I'm becoming every serious YouTuber. Every serious YouTuber. Every YouTuber who does a serious video. I am now every YouTuber. Cool. Um. Yeah, I just want to get this shit off my chest, really. Obviously, you know, most of the shit I've been dealing with has been just, like, lifted, you know, with the 459.90, but, like, I still feel like I should get, you know, everything out. I feel like that'd help. And before I start, I just want to say, this is not the Electric Pants Pity Party. You don't have to feel bad for me. Alright. <laughs> I'd rather you not even, like, just... I'm not intending to make people feel bad for me. That's not the intention for this. I just want everyone to know, you know, how I felt. You know, the mistakes that led up to that. And... I guess how you can avoid that you know, yourself, whoever's watching this. You know, ever since I got like my 33 second garbage, uh, one one is fire Mario run because I was, I couldn't even finish the game. Um, <laughs> That was like the only thing I could do, really. Um, even since then, you know, my goal had been, you know, sub five before 2021, which you know I thought was reasonable and well, ended up being reasonable, I guess. Um, And yeah, at the time I thought that was super reasonable. I thought I could get it, you know, you know, Oct October sounded, you know, like a reasonable time goal for sub five at the time, at least. Uh, I was having, you know, troubles with eight two. Then uh, finally, finally, in June, I believe. It was either June or July. Um, finally, I finished the game for the first time ever. 605. 605 was my first PB in uh, SMB1 any percent. And as far as I know, that's actually pretty good for first PB, I guess. <laughs> it's, it's decent. There have been people with better first PBs, but whatever. Um, and then, you know, my goal was, because, you know, 605, and, you know, you had a death and a power-up grab, which was unnecessary. So, like, I, I knew I could, you know, do sub-6, so immediately I started going for sub-6, got 552, Pretty Pog, sub six. And so at that point, I'm like, I'm less than a minute away from my goal. I can absolutely do this. Um, so I did attempts, a few streams of attempts. Actually, I also got into minus one inning around that time. You know, my first ever PBs, you know, 322, 317, 259. You know, those were also around this time. And then, like, out of nowhere, really, you know, in the first, like, 10, 15 minutes of one of my streams, I literally got 512. And, you know, you can tell I was freaking the fuck out. <laughs> I was freaking the hell out because like I didn't that it really came out of nowhere it really came out of nowhere you know a 40 second PB
and one that was you know so close to sub 510 already so that came out of nowhere and really when that happened I, I was like I, I felt like I was on top of the fucking world I thought I could fucking do anything you know at that point I was I was certain I am definitely definitely going to get sub 5 for 2021 maybe even like 457 um no no <laughs> I can definitely say I am not going to get 457 for 2021 but that's a, that's in hindsight I wasn't aware I was being super overconfident at the time And because I decided to try and keep the momentum going, I tried to do sub five attempts basically immediately, which was way out of my pay grade at the time. <laughs> and I very quickly realized that and uh, took a break from the category and started focusing more on uh, minus one ending, which you know, I, I got a pretty good PB in after a little bit you know 252 244 and then 236.47 uh, especially after that uh, I was I was pretty happy with where I was in minus one ending and uh, that was like a month or two after the 512 uh, took a small break like maybe a week or two uh, from just SMB1 speedrunning in general and then uh, return to any percent to uh, try and beat my long-standing 512 long-standing it had been standing for like a month or two <laughs> like shut up but I came back with like a mindset that I hadn't really had before and I don't think I've had since which is just like don't think about anything just you know do the things and go which isn't isn't the best isn't the best mindset in the world but it's also definitely not the worst definitely not the worst I can say that from experience um, and that, you know, paid off pretty quickly. I got 507, I believe, like a week or two after returning to any percent. And I was pretty proud of that. And then like another, maybe, I think it was like a, yeah, I think, I think it was a week after the 507, I got the 505. I was trying to go for the same mindset, but... It was like the 505 was like right at the end of like a really long session of attempts, so I was just like mentally done. So I was very, I was, I was very angry. I was very, I was raging pretty hard. And that 8 3 did not help. <laughs> that did not help in any way. Um, I didn't like that PB, both because. Both because of the 8-3 and because I was literally baby raging. <laughs> so, like, not a fan of that PB. Even in hindsight. And uh, it, was at that, it was at that point I learned, oh, shit. Uh, any Astopia runs at 60 flat on Linux for some reason. So had to switch to the uh, objectively worse FCUX, which thankfully runs at NES frame rate. Thankfully. <sighs> so that's why speedrun on, on FCUX, because NES Topia 
not a thing I can use. I can use it. It's just that I lose like 0.5 seconds. Which is like, no. It's like more than a frame rule. It's like a frame rule and like a little bit off an 8.4. So like a decent 8.4. It's so like, no. I'm just, I'm not dealing with that. <laughs> but anyway, getting sidetracked. 503 and 502.26 also happen decently quickly uh, as well. And I was pretty satisfied with the, the 502.26. That was, that was a pretty good time, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I, you know, I, w I would do like occasional 501 or 5 flat or maybe 459 if I was, if I was feeling like spry. Um, but nothing really with any sort of purpose or goal. It's just kind of, you know, some attempts, I guess. <laughs> I wasn't, I wasn't really grinding for anything serious, because you know I was satisfied uh, for the most part. Um, but then after like a week, somewhere around that. like simplistic went from I believe 501.62 to a mid 459 459.55 unless he that wasn't his first 459 I don't know I think that I think I think simplistic's first 459 was the 459.55 I don't remember anything at least uh, anything slower at least so but yeah I uh, saw he went right from like a relatively high 501 to like a mid not a relatively high a, a mid 501 to like a mid 459 and I was like maybe I can do that because I wasn't that far behind him anyway I, like I was like two frame rules, maybe a frame rule and a better 8-4 behind Simplistic, so it's like, I could probably do that too. So that inspired me, and I started, you know, steering my occasional any percent attempts into like a certain direction, you know, gave them a sort of sense of purpose, I guess, I don't know. Uh, I would start specifically grinding for 459 and on my first you know real serious session of 459 attempts I got 284 on 459 pace like literally on pace no joke and it died not in wall jump room I was like, kind of expecting it to die in wall jump room uh, if anything but no I died because it because it got cheat in turnaround room I was pretty salty but you know I, 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 I felt like I could probably get back there you know if, if I throw a little bit more attempts I can probably get back there so it's not that big of a deal you know if I can if I can get there in the first hour of 459 attempts literally the first hour of serious 459 attempts I get to 84 I can probably get back you know continue the session but I tend to not get that many runs to 84 in you know within one session so like I kind of wasn't expecting to get back anyway uh, at least in the in the one session but one thing I very quickly began to notice was that I was not, in fact, getting to 8-4 again. It seemed like every single run that got past 8-1 died to 8-2, because that was what happened. 8-2 <laughs> kind of became a meat grinder. Like, literally every, literally 
every single run that went in there just went in to die, basically. And it was because of fucking Blant, because I learned to do it, finally, after literal months of not being able to do it, because the movement's kind of awkward. Finally learned to do it, so I decided I can probably imp implement this in runs, because it is, you know, the fastest method of getting over the pipe. It, aside from, you know, task Blant, but that's hard, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> And, you know, I got to, like, 1 in 20 for, like, I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with it anymore. Like, God. It was just run after run after run after run that got to 8-1, just literally died to the dumbest shit, either Blant or literally the stupidest thing that could go wrong ever like not not jumping uh you know for this not jumping up the stairs literally dying to the final koopa because i forgot the pattern because it had been so long since i got past blant and like ah especially after a very uh especially after an at the time, recent, uh, like, three-hour session, like, uh, like, I, I couldn't deal with it anymore, so, and, yeah, you know, even then, you know, the whole kind of self-hatred shit, was kind of starting to show there uh, even then which was like a month ago so that like that's a thing so like I start trying to after conversation with Spiker in one of my streams where I was feeling especially negative towards myself because you know I got past it in the first hour why can I just never get past it again you know I I, was, I, I felt like I deserved the 459 game doesn't give a shit if I, if I if I feel like I deserve it which I really don't deserve the 459 I'd say at, at this point <laughs> like I feel like I really don't deserve it if anything but at the time, I was like, I know I can do it. I know I can do it. I need to do it. So I can prove to myself that I'm a good gamer. <laughs> and also, so I can be taken serious by others. Because I assumed for some reason that if I didn't get sub 5, I would never be taken seriously. Which is really stupid to think. Uh, looking back on it. So, you know, you already had some of that anime there. And then... So I... I couldn't, I couldn't deal with doing Blant anymore. It got to be too much. So uh, I was like, I need to do something else. I need to do something else so I can just not, so I can just not. Because I, I don't, I don't want to do this anymore. So I went to like, I think it was either just the main SMB1 speedrunning server, or both the main SMB1 server and Nifsky's server. Uh, to ask to see to see if I could do uh, BBBB instead of BBBB being a safe strat in 8 2 that gives consistent Koopas and makes the level like literally free unless you accidentally do some dumb shit.
uh, for the most part, makes it pretty free. And I was told that you can, in fact, get sub five with uh, with BBBB because it was just two frame rules. So, you know, I went over in my head, made sure, checked a couple more times just to make sure. And with the whole route I had planned, if I did a perfect 8 1, which involved getting good judges frame rule, then I would be able to get sub 5 with BBBB. And I didn't find immediate success with it, but after, you know, like a couple more runs to 8 4 which I was honestly kind of excited for, you know, internally. You know, deep inside I was, I was, yeah, I was excited to be getting back to 8-4, but, you know, externally I was still mad that, you know, even though I was getting to 8-4, I wasn't PVing. You know, a couple more runs to 8-4, and I finally, finally touched the axe in 8-4, I was so hype, I was so excited, but I was also really nervous, because the 8-4 was kind of slow, so I wasn't entirely sure if it would be fast enough for sub-5. So I went, uh, end of the recording, because I believe, yeah, I was doing offline attempts. So I was only local recording instead of also streaming. Um, so I ended the session. And it uh, ended recording. And went to some West I come to do retime. Uh, at the time, I still mostly used frame count, which is like, don't do that. It's just kind of inconvenient. It's a lot easier to just compare Bowser patterns. But what am I trying to say? So I went okay, I went frame counted it, you know, put in the start frame, the end frame, the run. I was very very nervous but very excited that you know I, I could have finally got sub five i was really excited i was you know i literally had you know discord open prepared to spam the nifsky uh, discord general prepared to spam sub five and i scrolled down to look at the final time and five flat Point four three. That's when I saw check Bowser pattern to confirm and yeah, five flat point four three. And I was very confused. I was like, did I lose the frame rule in one one? Did I like did I did I somehow lose the did I somehow lose the frame rule in like 4 2 or a1 because I felt like they were slightly fast at least like at least fast enough to save the frame roll but with the strats I was going for for both of them the frame rolls were kind of tight so I could see that maybe I lost a frame roll there maybe I lost a frame roll in a2 maybe the maybe the BBBB was you know, just fast enough to give 340, but just slow enough to lose the 340 frame rule. Or maybe, maybe my 8-4 turn run was just that bad. Nice voice crack. Um, but no. Um, all that was fine. I got the frame rule in 1-1, one, one, got it in 4-2, got it in 8-1. 
the 8-4 wouldn't have been fast enough for sub-5 if BBBB lost two frame rolls looking back on it, but that didn't really matter at the time to me. I didn't really think about that. Um, but no. BBBB actually loses three frame rules instead of two. Like I like I thought, like I was told. So that was fun. So felt defeated. Like I'd come all this way. Finally I'd finished a run. And I could move on to like four fifty eight or mine sort of thing or something. Uh but no. Wasn't even sub five. And at the time I despised that PB. And even now I still kind of don't like it that much, but whatever. PB's a PB. But, like, the fact that it wasn't sub-5 just really made everything so much worse. I felt like, you know, the one shot the one shot I had at sub five and I fucked it up. And uh, you'll notice if you look back on uh, any of the surviving streams, you'll notice a lot of the time I direct the blame towards myself. Which is kind of kind of a theme Kind of, kind of a theme for when I was going for sub five, uh, directing the blame for fucking up towards myself. <sighs> so I tried taking a break, but you know, if if you're a speedrunner, I think you know what I'm talking about when I say there was this little fucking nagging voice in the back of my head is like. Your PB sucks ass, and you know you can get sub-5. Fucking come back and get this shit, and then you can do whatever you want. And that would happen every time I tried to take, like, a small little break. That would happen, and I'd come back, do an attempt session, feel like shit afterwards, because nothing good c came out of it, except maybe a run that died to 8-4. Try, you know, and then the cycle would be, you know, try and take a break, come back. And this like over and over and over and over and over again. Sometimes the break would last for like multiple days, but I would always eventually come back. And the same shit would happen. And at some point I started actually dreading doing 459 attempts, but I kept doing it because I felt like I had to. You know, if I wanted to prove myself. Because I felt like I would just never be seen as, you know, a, a good player until I got sub 5. You know, I felt like I would. I felt like no one would ever take me seriously. I felt like no one would like me if I didn't have sub five. So I really, you know, every time, despite how much I hated doing attempts, I would do sub five attempts. Immediately regret it once I died to eight four. Sometimes even a couple times in the same stream go back to taking a break, just, uh, all that shit, and the self-toxicity, like, sure, the psych, there was a cycle, but every time the cycle repeated, you know, the self-toxicity, you know, sh shot up, and I was becoming less and less convinced, despite what everyone else around me was saying, 
that I would ever get sub 5. And it just kind of spiraled out of control. And uh, soon it became worse because December rolled around. December, the last month of the year. I had 31 days to accomplish my goal that I had set all the way back in June. 31 days. That was how long I had to get sub 5. And then, and soon, you know, this was around the period of time that a ton of people started getting sub 5. Like, notable examples, Adam, but, I mean, Adam Ferrari's a legend, so, like, that was kind of, kind of a given. Adam, Dylan, Adam Ferrari, Dylan Linder, Gaster, who else, 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 there's someone else, there's someone else, there's someone I'm forgetting. You get the, you get the point. A ton of people started getting sub five. And I was just being left in the dust. At least I felt that way. And, you know, seeing all these people finally get their times down to 459 after months and months and months of grinding, especially for, especially for Gaster, nine months. I'd go stir crazy if I had to wait nine months for sub five. But man is a champion. And just, it really, it's hard to say how I felt. There were so many emotions mixed in there whenever I got sub five. Jealousy. Jealousy was a big one. I was immediately jealous whenever whenever someone got 459. Just immediately jealous. I, felt, I was like, that, sh that should be me. That should be me right now. I should be one of these people who are getting sub five. You know, obviously jealousy, again, big thing that I felt. Also, you know, I just felt good at the same time because someone got sub five. That's a really big accomplishment. But also felt really good for them. I felt great for them. But at the same time, it also really really hurt it really hurt seeing someone get sub five meanwhile i'm just god you know especially gaster it's not that i don't it's not that i didn't want him to get sub five that's not that's not what i was intending at all i i didn't want him to get sub five no, you know what I mean, all right? I didn't want him to not get sub five. It's just like, God. Seeing people progress past me while I'm just stuck in like an endless cycle of just failure and self-negativity and God and someone else is pulling through it just it didn't help it didn't help that's for sure and as December kept going and going and going the days kept going up and up and up and up and uh, the amount of days left I had to achieve sub 5 kept going down and down and down and down the pressure slowly started increasing day after day after day 
So I started feeling even more like shit. And I don't know. Then December twentieth, twenty twenty. Like fucking midnight one AM. For whatever reason, somehow, I brought back part of that mentality that I had back in my 507. I don't know where the fuck it came from. It just happened again. Obviously, I did still have the shit mindset too, but it just kind of combined with the like, kind of okay mindset. And... fucking happened, you know? <sighs> Leave all that shit behind. <sighs> now, I feel like so much of all of this could have been prevented if I just practiced and done no reset runs. If I had done those, I felt like so much of this stupid fucking situation could have, pre could have been prevented. So much of all this fucking toxicity and self-hatred, all that could have been at least lessened if I actually fucking tried. To do no reset runs and did some um, level of practice but no when i was when i initially started going for sub five i was headstrong i was like i don't think practice is going to help me that much and i'm not good at no reset runs which should have been a sign and all that like If anyone's going for sub five, just please, please practice. Please practice as much as you can. Practice. Practice. That's the biggest thing that I didn't do that made this whole mess happen. I didn't fucking practice. Okay? Practice. That is one of the most important things you can do going for a time like sub five another thing don't let that fucking nagging speed running voice at the back of your head that always is like oh your pb sucks and you know you can beat it you know you can beat it you know you can get a better time Stop doing whatever you're doing. Just go beat it. It's not that hard. Just, you know you can do it. Go do it. Don't listen to that. All right? If you feel like you need to take a break, take a break. Please, for your own sake, take a break. Even if you have to force, even if you have to force yourself to, even if someone else has to force you to, take a goddamn break. It will help immensely. It helped me with... The 507, when I was trying to beat my 512, it helped with that. Okay? And I can say that because I immediately got f not one, not two, but four PBs very soon after. Okay? Taking a break fucking helps so much you wouldn't believe. Take a break.
it's it's your biggest ally in speedrunning. And before you hit that record button or before you hit that stream button, practice the tricks you're worst at. Practice the tricks you're worst at. If you're not if if your consistency is down a ton, just don't for that day. Just do something else and return to it the next day. Okay, don't do what I did and just keep pushing even though you're not good and and, and you know it's like above your pay grade. Don't 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 do that. Don't do that. So what can I, what can you take away from this? What can you take away from this? I'm not sure really, just. Just do what you can to have a positive mindset because it's going to make, it's going to make the moment when you finally hit that time that you want, when you finally get that thing that you want, it's, it's going to make that moment so much sweeter. It's gonna make the moment so much better. And you can know in confidence that there was not a period of time in the very recent past where you literally hated yourself. Just PMA is so important. I feel like that's kind of all I have to say, so I hope someone got something out of my ramblings. I hoped, I hope maybe what happened with me will help someone else finally achieve something they've wanted, they've wanted to do for a long time. I don't know. That's all I can hope for, really.